We have a massive coronal hole that is rotating into the Earth strike zone, and this could be a repeat offender for the fourth time for a solar storm. That story and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is getting very exciting. We've been seeing a lot of filament and prominence activity on the sun's limb, but it's not really been solar storm worthy because nothing is really escaping. The big story, however, this week is this massive coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days, and it's going to be sending us some fast solar wind. Now, if this region looks familiar, it should. We've been dancing with this particular solar storm player since August. It has already brought us three solar storms, two of which were G2 level solar storms. Now this time around, it looks like the hole is beginning to close, so it's probably not going to get us quite as high level storm as we've seen in the past, but it could be a fourth time repeat offender for solar storms, and it could bring aurora clear down to mid-latitudes. Switching to your M-flare threat meter, you can see we continue to be incredibly low when it comes to X-ray flux and therefore by proxy the solar flux. Some of us would actually call this pretty flat lined. This is what we have at solar minimum, folks. We're just not getting all that much. Every now and again, we will get an active region that pops up through the sun's surface and then kind of fizzles out quickly and dives back under. And it's really not giving us much variability in the solar flux. We definitely have no solar flares to deal with. But this does make uh, solar, solar flux low for radio propagation, so we're dealing with poor radio propagation on the Earth's day side. So amateur radio operators and shortwave responders, you guys are just going to have to keep dealing with it. And unfortunately, these conditions will continue over the next week and possibly two weeks before we see a reprieve. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've actually been very quiet when it comes to solar storms. We've been sitting at essentially normal conditions and bumping up to unsettled conditions a little bit here when we'd hit some fast wind or a little bit there when there would be like a little mini solar storm disturbance or something like that. But nothing that's really been sustained. But all of this is going to change. Because here right at the beginning of the month, we should be hitting that fast solar wind and that can easily bump us up to active conditions and possibly possibly even storm conditions over a short while. It'll bring sustained aurora to high latitudes, and it could bring some aurora even down to mid latitudes for a short little bit. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see on the Wesleyan in Stereo's view, that's the finger of the coronal hole that's now rotated into Earth view, and it's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days. But what is interesting is that you see that other kind of weird looking coronal hole. That's that H shaped or horseshoe shaped coronal hole that we had from last rotation. It looks like it's actually surviving its backside passage on the sun and it will be rotating into Earth view here in the next week and we will see what kind of disturbance it could bring us. It might even give us a chance to get back up into active conditions so you aurora photographers all hope is not lost yet. Now, unfortunately, what you don't see are any active regions on the sun's backside. You do see a little bit here at the very end, you see a little bit of, a, of regions rotating into Stereo's view on the east limb, but it's hard to say whether or not these regions are going to continue to survive. If they do make it into Earth's view, it's going to be about 10 days. And until then, well, the radio propagation for amateur radio operators and shortwave responders the propagation is going to continue to be poor easily over the next week to 10 days. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast wind from that massive coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions right at the beginning of the month. As a matter of fact, they're expecting about 70% chance of a major storm, with even minor storm conditions lasting in through the weekend and possibly into the beginning of next week. So we should have some decent aurora possibilities for you guys at high latitudes. Now, at mid latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions with about a 25% chance of a minor storm. And we could easily see sporadic active conditions through the weekend and then tapering off as the, be as the beginning of the week starts. So there is a good chance for your aurora photographers at mid latitudes to get a decent show.
Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are in solar minimum and we do have a spotless sun yet again. So that means everything is in the green when it comes to solar flares. This should make GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. Now, unfortunately, this also means the solar flux is extremely low. So amateur radio and shortwave radio responders, you guys are dealing with poor radio propagation right now, and this could easily continue over the next week, possibly even the next 10 days before we get a reprieve. Now, also because we're at solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is higher than it would be normally. So all of you frequent flyers, and this includes air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are now in the marginal range for radiation dose. And this does include you prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is getting very exciting. We have that massive coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days. And since this has been a solar storm producer in the past, we're going to expect something close to a solar storm at least. The hole is finally beginning to close up on us, which means it's probably not going to hit us quite as hard as it has hit us in the past. So effects may ramp up just a little bit more than they had before. So your roar photographers, this time you're going to have to stay on your toes, especially if photographers at mid-latitudes to make sure you get the shots you want. Now, as far as amateur radio operators are concerned, well, yes, we're back to a spotless sun, and the, unfortunately, the solar flux is back into the 60s. And so this means poor radio propagation, and you're gonna, just going to have to kind of deal with that on Earth's day side. Now, on Earth's night side, well, you're also going to be dealing with some issues with radio propagation because of the solar storm, but those conditions should pass once you get through this weekend. Now, as far as your GPS operators are concerned, well, as long as you stay away from the Dawn Dust Terminators and away from Aurora, your GPS reception should look pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.